What is up guys? Welcome to my channel here Liciously. I am sorry it's been such a long time since I've last posted on my channel. I have just been overwhelmed with work. I've also booked my wedding venue. It's finally happening later this year in October. And so I've been just busy planning out the whole wedding the ceremony, the reception, you know, the photographer, DJ. There's a lot of stuff when it comes to weddings and I'm sure a lot of you guys who've actually gotten married know the whole process it's been pretty hectic i'm actually going to be going on a trip to japan next week on wednesday so that's still a lot of planning and i still don't really know what i'm going to be doing some of you guys have been asking me if i'm going to go see dr suji that is not true although i might be able to take a look at where his office is located if i do end up going in the vicinity um, but I highly doubt that I'll actually be able to go in and ask questions and things like that But I will keep you guys on the updates uh, for Japan. It's gonna be a lot of fun I'm gonna be eating a lot of food traveling and doing a lot of things So I will also make a separate video for that once I do get a chance now before I get started on this video I wanted to give you guys a one year and five month update on my hair transplant Yes, it's been over one year and five months since I've had my last FUE hair transplant and I've kind of had some difficulty finding out like the exact uh, lighting inside my house because a lot of the places were kind of dark. But I think this area here, I'm actually right in front of a window and I have a lot of lights around me. So hopefully you guys can get a better resolution um, of my hair transplant. So this is at one year and five months. And as you guys can see, the hairs are still growing. And I've actually decided to grow out my hair, especially the, the top part. I just kind of wanted to cover the forehead because it is still a large forehead. But when I do take pictures for like my wedding, I wanted to grow it out because I have about six months. And hopefully I can do some type of styling or some type of perm to kind of cover my forehead. Now, since I do have my wedding date, that also means that I will be able to book my second hair transplant right after my wedding. And uh, obviously I can't do it you know, before my wedding, it's gonna get red, and I only have six months, and I feel like that's not enough time for the redness to go away, let alone, you know, the, the hairs to grow out. So, the redness will go away in about two months, I believe. But since I do have um, lighter skin, it might take longer than, let's say, somebody who has a darker complexion. I'm just not gonna have enough time to get a hair transplant and then, you know, have my wedding. So, I'm gonna probably gonna do it as soon as I uh, finish my wedding ceremony which will be towards the end of October. And I'm looking at getting my second hair transplant probably sometime in November in South Korea. If you guys have not been watching my uh, some of my latest videos. I am going to be getting a second hair transplant to lower the hairline and to add in the density. And the doctor that I will be working with is going to offer it free of charge. I'm very thankful for giving this opportunity. But in exchange, I will be documenting my second hair transplant progress and then keeping you guys updated on how the hair is turning out. So with that said, in today's video, um, I wanted to talk about a very hot topic that's been discussed lately for the past couple days. And I wanted to talk about Dr. Bratsu's lotion since he did present on April 14th at the Spring Congress of Italian Society for Hair Science and Restoration in Naples, Italy, where he talked about his, um, his lotion for hair regrowth. And many of us have been wondering when exactly the commercial date is going to be released, you know, how effective is medication for androgenetic alopecia, and what we want to see were pictures to see the before and after results of using Bratsu lotion. If you guys don't know what Bratsu lotion is, I wanted to do a quick review before I dive into what was said in the interview or for his presentation. Dr. Bratsu is a vascular surgeon and while he was working with patients that were dealing with diabetes, he noticed that after applying a certain type of lotion to the patient's limbs, it caused increased circulation that led to hair regrowth. So the lotion's main ingredients, we have DGLA, S equal and L cartonine, which treats various forms of alopecia. S equal binds to DHT and it neutralizes so that testosterone doesn't convert into DHT. DGLA, which is an anti inflammatory and a vasodilator, a commonly used vasodilator which uh, expands and widens the arteries, the blood vessels, is minoxidil, which people use to treat hair loss. Third ingredient that is actually in the lotion is going to be L cartonine, which is a metabolic enhancer that allows with increased scalp penetration. So apparently, Dr. Bratsu claims that, you know, his lotion does not come with the same side effects as finasteride or minoxidil. 
and that, that it can technically regrow five years worth of lost hair. But the claim comes from an anecdote of Dr. Bratsu that may have been lost in translation. So you guys can't really take that literally, but let's go ahead and discuss what was talked about in the Congress uh, for Dr. Bratsu's presentation. So he first talks about the mechanisms at the basis of androgenetic alopecia, where he talks about some of the causes for genetic hair loss. Um, as you guys can see in this uh, presentation, we have uh, poor blood flow. But we do have blood flow promoters such as minoxidil, which actually helps widen the arteries, which allows for further blood to flow into the scalp. Nutritional deficiency, you're lacking certain types of uh, nutrition or vitamins, which can cause and contribute to hair loss. And we have testosterone, which eventually converts to DHT. We have 5-alpha reductase inhibitors such as finasteride or dutasteride, which helps prevent testosterone from converting to DHT. And that leads to a short antigen phase where the hairs don't grow, and then loss of hair follicles, which is the main cause of androgenetic alopecia. Now the topic of his presentation is titled Liposomal Solution Containing DJLA, Equal, and Cartonine for the Treatment of Androgenic Alopecia. We need to talk about liposomes because liposomes are actually a big part of Bratz's lotion. And we know that liposomes are used successfully as systems for the delivery of many molecules. The lipid double layers of liposomes merging with cell membranes allows the release of its contents. So we know that prostaglandin E1, also known as PGE1, is a known microcirculatory activator. And already in the 1900s, it was incorporated into liposomes in order to prolong its plasma half-life. PG1 increases vasodilation, which is what minoxidil does. It helps widens up the blood vessels, increases capillary elasticity, and it also stimulates the proliferation of endothelial cells, all which contribute to hair regrowth. And in a research carried out by S. Antonio Clinic in Carlieri, it was observed that if a solution containing liposomes loaded with PG1 was applied on skin in the vicinity of skin ulcers of diabetic origin, there was hair regrowth. So this is kind of like Dr. Bratsu uh, figured out during this treatment of patients with diabetes. And this is the basis of these results where research began to develop a formula containing a precursor of PG1 transported in liposomes, which in combination with other ingredients was able to stimulate hair growth and slow down hair fall. We are going to talk about some of the ingredients, the main three ingredients in Dr. Bratz's lotion. We have DGLA, which is a precursor of PG1, a known microcirculatory activator. And this is one of the reasons because had he used PG1, he actually would have had to gone through FDA approval, but DGLA for some reason does not have to go through the rigorous process of the FDA. And this is why they were actually able to speed up the process and start commercializing this product. Uh, we don't know the date yet, but because of the fact that they're using DGLA instead of PG1, it's going to make the, uh, the process a lot quicker and people are actually going to be able to start using the lotion once they start commercializing to the public. We also have Equal, which is able to block 5-alpha reductase and antagonize the action of DHT, which is responsible for the loss of hair follicles. This is kind of like uh, finasteride, where it actually blocks DHT, um, and also for dutasteride, but we actually don't know how strong Equal is going to be when it comes to the treatment of pattern hair loss. But this seems like Equal is kind of like finasteride, and DGLA kind of acts like minoxidil, so you guys can kind of think of Bratsu's lotion as a combination of finasteride and minoxidil. But the only issue is that we don't know how potent this uh, medication is going to be towards treating hair loss. The third ingredient is L-cartanine, which is an energizing action. The best known activity of uh, cartanine is its role as a transporter of long chain fatty acids in the mitochondria of the cell, producing energy thanks to the beta oxidation of fatty acids. So as you guys can see in this diagram, L-cartanine also gives positive charge to liposomes, improving their adhesion to the scalp. Here are the specifics of Bratz's lotion. We have two specific formulas, one for male and female, environments for contamination, temperature, and controlled humidity, patented production technology to obtain liposomes of suitable size and charge, quality guaranteed by careful analytical checks on each production lot, uh, reproducibility ensured only by a validate industrial production. So we had good tolerability and effectiveness of the product. This is kind of like the meat of Bratz's lotion, the study design of androgenic alopecia after using Bratz's lotion. The product is the liposomal lotion, which contains the main three ingredients that I just discussed. It's for the prevention of hair loss. Patients, we had 30 males and 30 females. 
Duration of treatment was for six months. Each patient was using one milliliter of lotion a day on the scalp. Six months isn't quite a lot of time to really fully assess the full potency of uh, Brot's lotion. But in this presentation, they only went up to six months. So you guys can take it with a grain of salt. We don't know if it actually can increase with uh, the hair regrowth if you use it for longer than six months. Um, but this is at six months. So they tested out at different levels where, you know, before they started applying broad solution, they test, retested again at month one, month three, and then finally their final assessment at month six. So the parameters that were evaluated were using the total hair number, percent of antigen phase versus the percentage intelligent phase. Number of hair loss during the wash test. There's a pull test where you pull the hairs and try to see how many fall out. We had the hair diameter, also known as electron microscopy. And then the digital images of the head, clinical evaluation of the scalp, and six-month evaluation questionnaire from the patient's assessments. The males were 18 to 55 years old. They suffer from genetic hair loss from Norwood stage 2 to stage 4. And then females were between the ages of 30 and 60. They also suffer from androgenetic alopecia. And according to the Ludwig scale, they were from a stage 1 to 2. All right, so the results. The percentage of hair in antigen increases significantly. Um, after one month of treatment in females, and then after three months in treatment in males, while the percentage of hair intelligent decreases. We have the wash test. After one month of treatment, hair loss decreases significantly in both males and females. Pull test. The hair becomes significantly more resistant after one month of treatment in females, and then after three months of treatment in males. Diameter of the hair does not really vary significantly, and then the lotions were well tolerated by patients. No scalp out alterations have been reported, and we also did not have any side effects from the usage of broad solution within the six month period. Patient's feedback, evaluation questionnaire after six months, you guys can take a look, but I feel that this is very subjective, so I'm not really gonna go too much into detail, but you guys can take a look. Uh, we have different categories. We have reduced hair loss, thicker hair, stronger hair, more volume to hair, healthier hair, uh, things like that. And it seems like uh, a lot of them reported good results. But like I said, it's very subjective. So you guys can just take a look and see what the, uh, the patients put down. Now, here are the images. We only have one for the male and one for the female. Uh, we have one for the baseline, one at one month after treatment, three months and six months. So the doctor obviously used the best pictures uh, when it comes to the final results. So let's go ahead and start with a female. So the baseline, we can see a thinness in the, the scalp. And then after one month, it seems like there's more regrowth. And then finally at three months, it seems like it's getting thicker. Month six looks pretty, it looks pretty good compared to the baseline. There's actually no signs of hair loss after six months of usage. So that's pretty good. And let's go ahead and move over to the male. Now, honestly, I did expect a more compelling result to be presented. Um, but this does not mean that more impressive results do not exist. But I feel like presentation of data is everything. You know, ultimately, you guys can make your own decision and uh, conclusions based on the picture. But the man's results showed some improvement. Um, but it's not as significant as the female. And like I said, there's no word of release other than hearsay mentioned in various posts. And the bottom line is, you know, this might be a good supplement to Propecia or Finasteride or Minoxidil. And the thing is, a lot of people seem to have overhyped this whole Brots lotion. I feel like a lot of people were expecting to see somebody who had like a Norwood 7, um, you know, go, go back to like a Norwood 2 or Norwood 3 where they actually regained a full set of hair. But that's obviously not the case. And I think this is why a lot of people should not get their hopes up. But that doesn't mean that, you know, this whole broad solution is, you know, a scam. I think some people think it's a scam. I don't think it's a scam. I feel like there's a lot of potential and it looks very promising, especially if people can use it, you know, in conjunction with Finasteride or Minoxidil or even just sticking with Bratsu if the side effects aren't there. Because there's a lot of side effects, sexual side effects when it comes to using finasteride there's some people who also use minoxidil and suffer from side effects so if this can actually work and have the same efficacy as finasteride or uh, minoxidil without the side effects i think this would be a very good alternative for a lot of people who are actually looking to take hair loss medications i feel like a lot of people have very unrealistic beliefs with hair loss medications um, even to this day despite the fact that we have minoxidil and finasteride that's been available for decades people 
think that they will actually be able to regrow a lot of hair and they're very disappointed when they maintain or gain only a small amount of hair um, over baseline and a large part of that is because of marketing because you see you know patients uh, you know from like Rogaine or Minoxidil commercials or you know if you visit a hair loss clinic or forum you'll see examples of people who you know who went from like a Norwood 7 to like a Norwood 0 after treatment and on these forums and you know things like online a lot of people just show like the best results and the lucky few who actually get drastic results and the reality for most people is that these drugs are only going to help maintenance uh, much more so than regrowth and we still don't have a cure I don't think Broadsters lotion is I don't think you can call it a cure for hair loss because it's not going to go from a normal 7 to a normal 0 it's not going to regrow hair where you know just people are just fully bald it's not going to regrow hair and based on the pictures we know that that's not possible and uh, this is more of a maintenance type of medication and people should be able to accept that and know that you know until we develop more scientifically when it comes to stem cell research and actual hair cloning and things like that we're not going to be able to you know just cure hair loss so there's my take on that guys um thank you for watching um, I really appreciate all of your support. I will do my best to try to post up more videos on hair loss topics. But thanks for watching, guys. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Make sure to leave me some comments. If you guys have anything that you guys want to discuss or contribute or, you know, just give me your opinion on what you guys think about Broughton Lotion, make sure to leave me some comments and I'll be able to read them and respond back to you. But thanks again and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.